Hey guys, so the goal for this week is to learn about how over-the-counter painkillers actually work in the body to relieve pain. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go through these slide notes with you, just like I would as if we were in class together. Um, explain some of these, these terms and talk about the, the chemical processes that happen in the body when you get hurt. And then how um, aspirin, Aleve, ibuprofen, how all of these drugs work to stop that pain from occurring. So the first slide here is just highlighting the importance of learning about these drugs. So uh, the first reason is that a lot of people are buying them and taking them, $30 billion in sales in 2015. And then this survey here is kind of a famous survey done in 2001, finding that only a third of people surveyed could list the active ingredient in whatever drug they're taking. And then a third reported using more than the recommended dose, thinking it would boost effectiveness. So these drugs are, are generally viewed as safe. However, 200,000 people per year are hospitalized due to misusing them. So they are important to know about, and it's important to know how they work in the body. So we've talked about this a little bit already before we um, left school. We, we learned that there's two types of over-the-counter painkillers. There's NSAIDs and Tylenol, or acetaminophen is the drug name. So NSAIDs, the AI in there stands for anti-inflammatory. So inflammatory means swelling. Anti-inflammatory would be um, preventing swelling. So those drugs are ibuprofen, Aleve, which is naproxen sodium, um, and aspirin, and then a couple different types of aspirin. And then acetaminophen, really the only brand name is Tylenol. So Tylenol is not an anti-inflammatory. It will not stop swelling. And then a lot of these drugs can be mixed with um, an opioid to create a more potent painkiller. So, for instance, Tylenol is often mixed with codeine. Um, Tylenol is also mixed with hydromorphone to make Vicodin. So those would you would need a prescription for those if they were mixed with an opioid. Okay, so how do they work? Let's say you are out for a run by yourself, because that's really all you can do these days, um, and you step in a pothole and twist your ankle. So immediately your ankle starts swelling and it might turn black and blue eventually. So all of those things are happening because your body is producing this hormone called prostaglandin. Prostaglandins constrict your blood vessels. They increase inflammation. They also create fever in the body sometimes. Um, and your body is doing that to protect yourself and to start the healing process. Um, it will start a, it will increase inflammation to um, increase your metabolism around that area to start the healing process a little faster. It will encourage blood clotting so that you don't bleed out. Let's see if you get a cut. Same thing with constricting blood vessels. Um, so these are all these prostaglandins. There's a ton of different types. They're they're important for the healing process and they are produced when you get hurt. So um, this hormone is created from an acid. It's called arachidonic acid. Um, that arachidonic acid is converted into prostaglandin with the help of an enzyme. It's called cyclooxygenase, or it's usually abbreviated as COX-1 and COX-2. So COX-1 takes arachidonic acid, creates prostaglandin, and then the prostaglandin starts all of these, these things. In your body um, and then it also they also create pain so when you take an NSAID you want to shut down the production of a prostaglandin so that's what NSAIDs do they um, bind to the active site of the COX-1 enzyme and they shut it down so when they shut down COX-1 arachidonic acid cannot be converted into prostaglandin and therefore you cannot um, you can't swell, um, you can't, it reduces your fever, um, and it also stops your pain. So this, I'm going to present this slide so it goes in order. So this is showing the whole, it's called the arachidonic acid pathway. So this is the whole pathway. You have arachidonic acid, um, which is a, a fatty acid chain in your body. 
COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes, take around arachidonic acid and convert it um, in a bunch of different steps into types of prostaglandins. So each of these prostaglandin types down here are in charge of different things, whether it be pain, fever, blood clotting, constricting blood vessels. So when you take aspirin or ibuprofen, the enzymes will get shut down, which means that no prostaglandin can be produced. Okay, so like I said, prostaglandin um, causes swelling, fever, and pain. So when you shut that down, you are reducing all of those things. So the NSAIDs can be used to reduce swelling, to um, stop a fever, and for mild pain relief. Aspirin specifically, so different types of NSAIDs are better at shutting down different types of prostaglandin. So aspirin specifically is good at shutting down the blood clotting prostaglandin. So um, when your blood clots, it can lead to a heart attack or a stroke. So some, someone who's at risk for those things to happen um, might be on a daily regimen of aspirin so that their blood clotting factor um, is shut down a little bit every day. So aspirin sometimes is called a blood thinner. It doesn't really thin the blood. It just helps prevent the blood from clotting. So some prostaglandin is used for protecting your stomach lining. So when you take an NSAID, you are shutting down that type of prostaglandin. So as well as the pain relief prostaglandin, you're also leaving your, your stomach lining exposed and unprotected. Um, and then also what you saw in the lab is that um, these pills are acidic. So they sit in your stomach acid and, and can wear away at the lining of the stomach. So NSAIDs, one of the side effects is that you might have some upset stomach. Um, eventually over the long term, you might get ulcers in your GI tract, your esophagus, your stomach, your small intestine. And then also your um, NSAIDs reduce flow of blood to the kidneys and your kidneys are in charge of filtering out your blood. So if your kidneys are working more slowly, you, you have fluid buildup in your blood and that can lead to high blood pressure. So most of these side effects are over the long term. I mean, if you take aspirin once, you're probably gonna be okay. Um, but over the long term, these kind of things can happen. There's also warnings for who should not take aspirin, um, babies, um, pregnant nursing mothers, I shouldn't take NSAIDs. Also, if you are someone who already takes a blood thinner or you have bleeding problems in general, you can't. You shouldn't take NSAIDs because you may thin your blood out even more. Another big warning against aspirin specifically is um, you you can't take aspirin after you have the flu or the chicken pox or any kind of virus, including. Coronavirus, we'll talk about that later, um, because you're at risk for developing Ray's syndrome, which is swelling in the liver and the brain, um, which is obviously not good. Okay, so then aspirin, so we've only been talking about NSAIDs up to this point. Tylenol works a little differently. It works a little further down on the arachidonic acid pathway, so it doesn't shut down the prostaglandin that causes swelling. So you can't take aspirin to reduce swelling. So in my example where you were running and you twisted your ankle, you, you wouldn't go for Tylenol because you, you want an NSAID to help reduce the swelling. But it does um, relieve pain pretty well, and it, you, you can also use it for fever. Um, Tylenol is processed by the liver. So there is um, a limit to the amount of Tylenol that you can have per day. It's 4,000 milligrams per day in a 24 hour period. Um, a typical dose is about 1,000 milligrams. So you can only have about four doses of Tylenol per day. And that include, or of acetaminophen. So that would include like um, Dayquil and Mucinex. All of those decongestants have acetaminophen in it. 
So you have to watch out for how much acetaminophen you're actually taking per day. If you have a real bad cold and you're reaching for a bunch of different types of drugs, you need to be aware of that. Mixing with alcohol is also dangerous because your liver is already trying to filter out the toxins of the Tylenol. So if you're mixing alcohol with that too, your liver is kind of working in overdrive. All right, a couple more slides reviewing we, what we saw in the lab. So we saw that the painkillers dissolve faster in water than in vinegar. This usually the hypothesis are the hypotheses um, are the opposite that you think it would dissolve faster in vinegar because that kind of just sounds right. Um, but it's actually water. If you look at the pH scale down here, water is more neutral. It's about a seven. Your stomach acid is um, there's a range of one to three on the pH scale. Vinegar is about a three. So the vinegar examples were supposed to represent your stomach acid. Um, if you're in a chem lab and you spill an acid, the way to clean it up would be to mix it with a base because acids and bases react very well together and neutralize each other. So your the pills, NSAIDs and Tylenol, they're very acidic. So when you're mixing an acidic substance with another acidic substance, they don't mix very well. So that's why the, the pills didn't dissolve very well in vinegar. But when you mix them with water, a more basic um, substance, you have a, a faster dissolving rate. So the lower the pH or the more acidic, the slower the tablet dissolves. So that's important for um, someone who's taking aspirin every day. So if you take regular aspirin, it's gonna sit in your stomach acid for quite amount, a, a good amount of time before it will dissolve and take effect. So having that acidic substance sit in your stomach is, is not great for the lining of your stomach. So because of that, there's a couple different types of aspirin to, to kind of help with that. So there's buffered, aspirin, which has a base added to it, which helps the pill dissolve faster. So it's, it's sitting in your stomach for less amount of time. So it's less irritating on the lining. And then you have something called um, the enteric coated aspirin, which was the St. Joe's low dose aspirin. It has a coating on it that allows um, the pill to pass through the stomach and go right into the, the um, small intestine because it's designed to, to dissolve in a more basic environment. So the small intestine is, is more basic than your stomach. So both of those two types of aspirin help protect the lining of the stomach. But there is a con to that, um, which is that it, can, it takes longer to take effect because it has to pass through the stomach into the intestine. And then it's still shutting down some of the prostaglandin that protects your stomach lining. So once it does take effect, you're leaving your stomach lining a little bit more um, unprotected than it would have been. Okay, that was a lot. Um, so you can watch this video if you want. That kind of just recaps everything and it gives you more of a visual. And then this one's just for fun. It's a time lapse of pills dissolving in water. So um, use this video to fill out the review guide and then stay tuned. There's going to be, I'm going to post some more information about um, coronavirus because there's been a lot coming out on whether or not you can take ibuprofen if you're suffering from COVID-19. So stay tuned.